Spiritually speaking, chains are the byproduct, the consequences, the side effects of sin. Now, if chains are the fruit of sin, I want to submit something to you. Chains are the fruit of sin. Chains are the byproduct of sin. Chains, I, I want to submit this to you, are the side effects of sin. See, chains don't show up by themselves. Chains, watch this, if chains are the fruit, then sin is the root. So, so, so a lot of times we pay attention to the fruit, but don't deal with the root. So today I came to tell you, he came for your chains, but your chains is just what everybody sees. But, but your root, you can hide. a lot of PCC but if you're ever going to be hey, you're ever going to be delivered if God is ever going to really work in your life you're not going to just be able to you can't just deal with the fruit you got to deal with the root if you agree with me say yes yeah 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 so again change change the great writer the English writer Samuel Johnson once said he said the chains of habit are too weak to be felt sometimes until they are watch this too strong to be broken now I liken this to sin because sin many times the chains of sin uh -huh, are too weak to be felt when you're doing it but, but a lot of times the enemy will uh, uh, chain you up to, until watch this the chains become too watch this too strong to be broken the chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken likened to the chains of sin are too weak to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. But this is the, the very purpose of God. God sent me by here today to tell you that this particular sin issue is not new. Ah, glory to God. So when you are sitting in your bed and your tears are dropping on your pillow because there are things that are trying to encapsulate you and imprison you. You need to know that you are not alone. That's why when the daughter was up proclaiming that there is therefore no condemnation. She was speaking the truth of God. As the oracle of God because God is trying to tell you what you've been through what you're going through what you will experience you are not alone daughter son sin has been around for a long time ever since Adam sinned and rebelled against God Adam brought death to life because of his sin and because he brought death to life, then what happened is, uh, then sin became a part of our DNA. So from generation to generation, generation to generation, generation to generation, sin ran into, ran from one generation to the next generation, from the next generation to the next generation until it ran into Jesus. Now that's the problem. It's because poverty ran in your family until it ran into you. But see, that's a mindset. I don't know who I'm talking to up in here because actually I was just speaking prophetically. Listen, listen, listen. Illegitimacy ran into, in your family until it ran into you. I'm waiting for you to get it. Rejection, watch this, rejection ran in your family from one generation to the next generation. But the problem is it ran into you today. Because you have Jesus on your side today. And if you would just wake up and realize who's on your team. See, the Bible, John says it's for this purpose. 
was the son of God made manifest. In other words, the son showed up because of your chains. But listen, Jesus don't have a problem with sin. We do. He already died so that you could be set free. There's a lot of us up in here. I can play with you, but I'm already giving you the solution right now. I'll give you the five points. Don't worry about it. But I've already given you the answer already. Jesus is the answer. Right now, somebody ought to be cutting a step up in here. Because, God, listen, if you got Jesus, you got everything you need. He died so you could be free. We, got, we could preach that right there. He died. He died. He died. He, and watch this. The crazy thing is he's not dying. He already died. No, he ever liveth. He ever liveth. He, see, he's already died. What am I trying to say to you? What am I trying to say? Here's the revelation. You are already free. What am I trying to say? There is no, there is no depression holding you. See, this is one thing about Jesus. He literally can kill the chains. He can open up the door, but you got to walk out of it. If Jesus is who he said he is, if Paul, when Paul said, wherefore God has given him all authority, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That means cancer. If cancer is a name, it has to bow. If rejection is a name, it has to bow. If retaliation is a name, it's got to bow. If lust is a name, it's got to bow. If hatred is a name, it's got to bow. To what? To the name of... Somebody ought to say yes! Woo! So we actually could go home. But because I don't want PD to get upset with me, I want to, I'm going to give you five points. Is that not amazing that somebody could actually give you the answer? Yeah, come on. Woo. That's just like many of us. Yeah. Many of us are in chains, but we're not in chains. You're in chains, but you're not in chains. You're in prison, but you're really not imprisoned. There were people a long time ago that were set free, but did not watch this. There were some of them that just did not walk out. Because we work in collaboration with God. God can do everything he wants to do for us. But at, at, at watch this. At some point, you've got to get up. I used to say it like this. Once you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Then you'll get up and walk out of it. Because the door is wide open. The blood has already been shed. Jesus has already died on the cross. Just for you. And John said, for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested. I feel like preaching today. I feel like preaching. So this, this, this sin thing happened until it ran into Jesus. Wrong person. You, I dare you. you go to generation to generation. You, you think you can defeat Jesus? Wrong. He was born to defeat sin. He was born to, des to destroy chains. And I'm so thankful. So why is this important to me, Pastor Will? Except for the screaming and all of that stuff. Why is it important to me? Why is this? I appreciate the scream. That is your revelation, praise him. Why is this important to me? Well, because it then changes your prayers. <laughs> I don't no longer pray, Lord, bring me out. I pray God give me strength so I can walk out. <laughs> give me the strength because God will feel good. I'm sorry. I just, I'm like, I say stuff that like you would be talking about over dinner. I say something like, girl, you need to leave him alone. I say that in the pulpit. You know, those kind of conversations. 
You know he ain't no good, girl. You know he ain't, he ain't under the government of God and you sitting up dating him. That's why he, he acting like that. He don't even take you out at, in the daytime. He only take you out at night. I say that kind of stuff. But it's them chains holding on to you. Hey, hey, listen, God can't lose something you love. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm going to give you five points that I extracted out of this and then I'm going to be done. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you and go have some dessert. Praise him. <laughs> you know how I know when my message is supposed to be over? I start getting hungry. <laughs> I smell macaroni and cheese and mixing with yams. I don't know. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Some of them just got chained again. I got a chain to the bistro. Praise him. No, I'm just, okay, I'm going to give you five. Now, listen, I made you laugh. All of y'all owe me five dollars. I made you live 16 seconds longer. You know, when you laugh, you laugh and you can laugh about this stuff. We all are dealing with crazy stuff. Some of us are doing crazy stuff. Well, dealing, but you've got to learn how to laugh. Enjoy your life. You only have this many. It is true. You only have this many. And, and God really, in all honesty, if you are saved, if you're not saved today, we want to encourage you to get saved because you're missing out. You're missing out on fighting this devil. Man, we need you. Come on. Come on out of there and, and help us fight the devil. Praise him. That just means that there are other people that are, are hurting and they need us. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. So I'm going to give you five. I'm going to give you five, because uh, I've already preached. I'm going to give you five, five uh, message, uh, five. <laughs> Why do y'all laugh? What's, what's wrong? Y'all so funny. I'm going to give you five points, and then I'm, I'm going home, because I got this dessert. I want to eat. Today is one of my cheat days. I lost 20 pounds. I'm proud of myself. Praise <laughs> Because y'all don't understand, I never thought I was going to be chained to food. I ain't trying to be funny. You know it's a chain when you wake up in the morning and you think of the carne casadas, you know what I mean? San Antonio, you got a chain that needs to be broken. But when you got a son like Stevens, you know, Steven will send me a picture of a carne casada and me getting bigger. You know, I'm like, oh my God. Stephen is a, is, a, is a visual preacher. Praise the Lord. He'll make you want to not, I'll be getting ready to eat the taco and he'll send me a picture like, I'll be like, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. You just broke a chain off my life. <laughs> All right, so I'm going I'm to I'm extract. I'm going to extract five principles, and then I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to go go home and see my my wife when she gets off. And I'll pray for my wife too. I'm, I'm praying that she can become everything she's called to be, so she ain't got to work on the weekends ever again. Because I preach different when my wife is around. <laughs> I'm serious. When my wife is around, I smell a certain perfume. I'd be like, worship to God. See, you can praise her. She's pretty. She can, she, she's a pretty girl. She, I, and I married her because of food, too. Pretty. And, and uh, she's a pretty girl. But uh, you can praise her, but I get to worship. Praise the Lord. Hey, glory to God. They'd be like, oh, first lady, praise him. I'd be like, girl, come on, go home with me. <laughs> you can praise him, but okay, it's another thing to worship. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. No more glory. All right, all right. Five points from this particular scripture. John said, he that committed sin is committing LUIs. In heaven, there is a record that is written that says you are living under the influence of the devil. John was not saying the beloved, you know, the revelator, the one that Jesus loved. When he wrote his first epistle, he was defending his gospel. 
from people that had all of this esoteric language and, and understanding of Jesus, this special knowledge, but then they wasn't living holy. John said, you know, it's kind of, okay, I'm not talking about God chasers, but I'm talking about, you know, like other places where people gather, they, they look holy, but they, not, they deny the power thereof. You know, I know Jesus, but then you, you walk out there and cuss somebody straight out. <laughs> and then when they, we see you cussing, you'll be like, I knew him too. I knew him. Why you change the, why you change the tense? I thought you, I thought you know him. Well, I knew him. Oh, well, okay. So John is defending his gospel and, and, and he writes this particular text and it seems like John is being a little rough. John is basically just straight up just telling people, if you commit sin, you are of the devil. So you're telling me every time I sin, I am just straight up a devil. That's not what John was saying. What John was saying is, is if you are committed to sin. In other words, when I leave here today, I'm going to sin. I already know it because I'm committed. <laughs> What John was saying was, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know, you already, if, if you already thinking about sin right now, what you're going to do and you're going to sin when you leave, then that means that, don't, that, that means that you're not dating sin, you marry. You are just committed to sin. I'm going, oh yes, when I get on the phone with her tonight, I'm cussing her smack out and you in church, huh? That means you are continuing in sin like as if there are no consequences. Are you crazy? John said if, if the individual that, that committed sin or rather is committed or continuous or practices sin. There's records in heaven. A lot of us are committing LUIs. Living under the influence of the devil. Some of us are as LWIs. It depends on what region you live in. <laughs> you live in uh, with uh, what? What is it? LUI is living under the influence. LWI would be what? Living with the influence. Some of y'all living under and some of y'all living with. <laughs> Now, the crazy part is, is this, is that you need to understand that the devil has been doing this for a long time. So John reveals it to us in this particular text. He says the devil, he see, he sinned it from the beginning. He been sinning. He is the progenitor. He is the originator. He is the beginning of all of it. He is the one that really fooled Adam and Eve to uh, believing a lie. And if you ever believe the devil's absurdities, he will definitely get you to commit atrocities. Should I say that again? If you decide to continue to believe the devil's absurdities, it's just ridiculousness. He will then cause you to commit and you will probably commit many atrocities. That's why you can't live a lie. So, and then he goes on and he says, so he wasn't being mean. Because a lot of people don't like the truth. A lot of people are not even hearing the truth of God. That's why they stay the same. You don't, it's not that the, that, that the Holy Ghost is going to change people overnight. Well, you didn't get all them chains overnight. Some of them you was born into. You ain't even asked for. Some stuff you wondering why you think a certain way. Why I think that way? Well, because your mama did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your daddy broke it, but then you brought it back to life when you start thinking like that again, watching YouTube. You looking at Facebook, uh-huh, something that broke on your mama now is alive back at you because somebody lied to you on Instagram.
Because you be believing lies everywhere. You just all kinds of absurdities that lead you to destroying your own life. Atrocities. Okay, I'm going to give you these five. But Jesus, here is, I love this conjunction that begins this particular sentence, this phrase, for this reason. For this particular purpose did Jesus come. So don't trip. When you ready to come out, you can come out. When you ready for your marriage to be better, it's going to be better. When you are ready to walk upright and become everything God's called you to do, walk in your purpose, you're going to be able to do it. Because there is nothing that can stop you. There is no power. Glory to God. Every Listen, 2 uh, uh, Colossians says this. It said that Jesus, when he died on the cross, he destroyed every power and principality, making a show of them openly. In other words, he, he put to shame all of the things that were trying to shame you. He's already done it. All you got to do now is kick that door open and walk through. Beloved, it's all on you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Beloved, it's all on you. When you get ready to come out, all you got to do is get sick of that the joker and you, you'll come out. All you got to do is get sick of the imitation and say, God, I want the authentic. Lord, I'm sick of the, hey, 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 I'm sick of this imitation job. Lord, I want the authentic. Give me my real blessing. Hey, hey, I'm waiting. Come on, if you agree, say yes. Yes. So I'm going to give you these five and then I'm done. Here we go. For this purpose he came, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's what Jesus does. He's a bad boy. Mm -hmm. He's a bad man. Jesus is the baddest man that ever lived. Mm -hmm. And so again, Jesus came for your chains because your chains made Jesus necessary. Just like light becomes relevant in darkness. Just like light is necessary in darkness. Jesus is necessary for sin. Your chains made Jesus necessary. Because God loved you too much to leave you the way you are. So he prepared a way. And let me tell you what the way's name is. So your chains made Jesus necessary. The things that try to stop you from becoming, the things that are trying to, 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 to stop your children you from y'all having the kind of relationship you should have, from the things that are trying to stop marriages and, and cause the, the spirit of divorce to get, uh, 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 we ain't with that. But that kind of stuff, Jesus came for that stuff. Now see, this type of preaching ought to make you say, I mean, without even anybody saying anything, that he came, it was his purpose. He was just being who he is. Yeah, yeah. So, so your chains made Jesus necessary. I'm going to give you these little points right here. And, and, and I pray it blesses you. Now, this is where it typically gets quiet because now I start dealing with uh, where you have to do self-examination. Now, here we go. Watch this. I'm going to move quick. Just, uh, So, your chains made Jesus necessary. Say it with me. Say, my chains, my chains made, Jesus made Jesus necessary. necessary. Now, look, there's something else I want to tell you. You need to know that it is difficult to free people from chains that they revere. Yes. 
In other words, it's difficult to free people from chains that they enjoy. You're not going to be free from anything that you adore. <laughs> I just treasure this, <laughs> this experience. Okay, you're not going if that, to, if that is out of the will of God, you're not going to get free from that until you start hating that thing. Now, let me give you a little bit more. Oh, y'all doing good. I think I'm putting the peel into in, 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 the, in the meat, so you're gonna eat the eat the meat and just get the medicine too. Or either y'all just like eating vegetables. Y'all like vegetables? Good. Here's some vegetables. Broccoli coming up. It's difficult for Jesus to loosen what you love playing and laying with. Watch this. Now, now watch this. I said that quick. You see, I'm trying to get past it. Okay. Now. Now, and there are consequences to all of this stuff. Come on, let's eat these vegetables real quick. There are consequences. Now, you know, consequences can be good and bad. But in this regard, we are dealing, we are talking about, let's not be, let's not allow the enemy to fool us at all. We are talking about bad consequences. Somebody say bad consequences. Now watch this. And there are consequences for hiding our chains instead of bringing our chains to him. Adam and Eve were good, great examples. They hear the voice of God walking in the garden. My God. God is saying, where are you? Like as if he doesn't know. And instead of them bringing their, their chains, they hide. Consequences. Come after that. Watch this. Let me, let me, let me tell you. Let me give you a little bit of this right here. I'm going to give you one, two, three, four statements in regards to consequences. Watch this. This is pretty cool stuff. It's cool to help you. Watch this. If the chains are not loosed, then they're licensed. <laughs> okay. If they're not annihilated, then they're authorized. We got some self-examination to do. See, you got to understand something about a devil, which I can't stand. See, I can laugh about other stuff, but when I start talking about the devil, I start getting mad just right then. Because the devil was a sinner from the beginning. Yeah. He is, Je oh, glory to God. Uh, uh, John described him and actually described him as Jesus saying he was a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. And all he wants to do steal is steal and kill and destroy you. Yeah. So I have to come as a messenger, as somebody that will tell you that if you don't allow him to lose it, then you are giving it a license to stay in your life. If you don't annihilate it because you have the power to plead the blood of Jesus. If you don't annihilate it, then you are giving it authority. If you don't crush it like you have the ability to crush the enemy's head, then it will continue. Now, the crazy thing about this is this. Is that it will not just continue in your life. It goes, watch this. Most of this stuff goes two and three and four generations. Illegitimate, Ill illegitimacy, the Bible says, can go ten. Yes, yes. Do you know as a people here, just I know that we are, we are a multicultural, multi-generational people. But do you know that uh, African, uh, African Americans are coming up on 400 years that with the first slave stepped on this ground? Watch that. You know what that's called? Ten generations illegitimacy not knowing your fathers we're just getting to the point where God literally is about to free this whole nation if you do not allow it to be broken in your life then it goes to the next generation in other words what I'm trying to tell you is devils you should defeat that your children will end up fighting Your 
your children will be wondering why they think the way they think, but it'll be, it'll be because it's a thought that you should have cast down. You should have, hey, you should have, you should have broken it so they didn't have to deal with it. See, y'all, you know, you made me, oh, you know, okay, let me make it real. Let me make it real. You know, like, I ain't trying to be funny, but like, have you ever heard about people that, um, <laughs> it's funny, it, it, heard about people <laughs> <it's funny. laughs> that, that have mothers and fathers, they be putting stuff in their name when they're young and they have broke, they have jacked up credit by the time they get older. That's a natural exam example likened to the, the situation we're talking about here spiritually. A lot of times your kids are sitting up dealing with stuff. They just growing up happy, want a sucker. I just want a sucker. I'm in kindergarten. I just want to go to sleep. And they don't even know they got lust is waiting at the door. Because there are things that we won't break. But not knowing that if we do not annihilate it, it is authorized to go to the next generation. So I'm going to say this real quick. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to be done. It says, it, it, this, this says right here, it says chains. I wrote this for you. Chains, you won't let Jesus handle. Chains, you won't let Jesus handle now. Chains that you won't let Jesus handle now will be handed down. Now, I'm going to give you another point right now. All of that was in point one. Everybody say point number one. Okay, let's go to point number two. Y'all thought that was five points right there? It wasn't. That was one. <laughs> Second point is this. What time do we normally get out? <laughs> I want to be respectful, but PD didn't even say nothing to me. PD said, all the chains are broke. Just come preach. I said, all right, man. Okay, so let me give you point number two. Point number two is this, and I'll explain it in a second. It says this. It is a theory, actually, that I have been uh, walking in in, in, in in my life for a long time. It is a theory. It is a theory that actually was proven truth by the word of God. Have y'all ever, like, ever thought about something and believed something, and then God took you to the word of God, and you saw that it was truth? Oh, my God. This is what happened to me. And so, so let me give you this point. It, it, this is it right here. It says this. The solution was already created before the problem was ever revealed. The solution, Jesus, was already created, the plan of God. Before your chains ever were, were revealed in your life. Before you even recognized you have a, had a problem, the solution had already been sent. How do I know? Revelation 13, 8 says what? And the lamb was slain from the foundations of the earth. Uh-huh. Somebody ought to give him praise right there because the lamb was slain. He was slain from the foundations of the earth. Look at your neighbor and say, from the foundations. Which means that the solution was already created before the problem was ever revealed. What does that mean though? That means that Jesus, that Jesus loves you. Think about this before you ever even got into the earth and started to develop all of this depression before you ever started to develop all of these feelings of rejection before you ever started to develop all of these feelings of illegitimacy and all these other things start trying to attach themselves to you. The solution for you to get through that stuff was already provided. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. Now, why is this possible? Why is this possible? Why does Jesus get to walk in this level of power? And sometimes we just seem so weak. Well, it's because of this next point. And I know a lot of preachers are very, very, very articulate. And they, they smooth their points to where you don't even know from one point to the next. But I specifically want to take the time out and tell you, I need you to catch this. This is my third point. <laughs> the reason Jesus could walk in the power that he walked in. And sometimes we struggle. And he understands the struggle because he's a good high priest. He was a man just like us. The Bible says, uh, Paul actually scribed it a little bit like this. I'll quote some of it. It says, uh, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God. Are you hearing that? 
who being in the form of God, he was God. Watch this. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Meaning he did, he, he came and, and he thought, he, he thought it, he knew he was God, but he didn't take advantage of the fact that he was. So what did he do? He became, he, he was, he was shaped in the form of a servant, right? And was created in the likeness of men. Now, having been found in fashion as a man, watch this. He became, he humbled himself and became obedient to what? To death. He became obedient to death. Even death on the cross. And I'm going to stop right there because I got to come back to that. But what you need to understand is, is that the reason that Jesus walked in such gr a great level of power is because he knew how to die. He humbled himself. See, if you're going to ever be free of chains, you got to learn how to humble yourself. Nobody else has the responsibility to humble you. If my people which are called by my name would humble somebody else. No. Humble. Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies. God in the form of Jesus shows up. John said he was the word made flesh. He knew how to die because he understood his death would produce you. God is so powerful that he sowed a seed into the earth. His name was Jesus. He died and now he is still reaping fruit to this day. I'm one of them. I'm one of the, heck, I'm one of the piece of fruit that came forth. Anybody in here fruit? Hey, 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 hey. you're the seed of Jack. I'm the fruit because I was jacked up at the root of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, so again, there is a reason. Hold on, Steve, we go get it, we go get it, man. Okay. I got to get something because I'm, I'm cramping a little bit, but the devil is a lie. Watch this. Because I ain't used to preaching all these services. I'm wondering if PD is all right. I'm praising. I'm praying right now. I'm like, four services, Lord Jesus. I fall out after one. Jesus to the Christ, Lord, you are calling us to another level. But Jesus brings some water and some pickle juice with you. <laughs> Lord, don't forget the pickle juice. Y'all owe me five dollars. You, you are cutting up five dollars. Five, ten, twenty. If I see any of y'all laughing anymore, y'all owe me money. I am not playing. Why? Because I called you to live 16 seconds longer. Mm -hmm. Something that that cigarette took away from you, I brought it back. Am I not crazy? Something is really wrong with me. All right, let me give you this third point. All right, here we go. Why, would, why, did Jesus, why was Jesus able to walk in the power that he walked in? Well, well, let me explain something to you. Jesus was only doing in the, word, in the earth what he was already famous for doing in heaven. The reason that a lot of us get chained and we get chained up is because we're, we're bored. <laughs> and, and when you're bored, and, and, and some of the reasons that we get chained up is because we're tired. Tired people make mistakes. You'll get linked to the wrong person just being tired. You didn't set up and been in a relationship with this joker for so long and you so tired of it, the next person come along, you just open the door. Come on in, man. Nah, nah. How long you gonna be here? Oh. Tired people make stupid mistakes. Oh. <laughs> Dog, why is everybody looking around? Everybody, I see people doing like that. Oh. <laughs> like, girl, he talking about you. <laughs> oh my God, I love y'all. Y'all are so crazy. I never come join God chases me. God chases is cool. I love y'all. Y'all scream. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, I love y'all. Okay, I can't wait. I'm gonna pay PD for letting me come. <laughs> I'm serious. You didn't brighten up my day. Praise him. <laughs> so Jesus did in the earth what he was already famous for doing in heaven. Jesus just was aligned with heaven. And because he was aligned with heaven, he was able to fulfill what he was called to fulfill. Many of us, I, watch this. The, the, the Bible says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Watch, watch this. In earth as it is in heaven. A lot of us don't understand that we we are famous in heaven for a lot of stuff. You are famous in heaven for doing what God called you to do, but y'all didn't got down here, got some doggone scales on your eyes, and forgot who you are. See, Jesus never forgot who he was. He knew he was the Son of God. He knew he was the Son of Man. He knew he was the one that was gonna die. Nobody can tell him, Peter, you're not gonna die, Jesus. Satan. Get behind me. I got to walk in my purpose. Some of y'all, you let anybody get you off track. You got to stay. You got to stick with what you are famous with in heaven. Doing the earth what you famous for doing in heaven. Now sit down. Let me tell you how you get it. Let me tell you how you get it. Let me tell you how you learn. You've got to become guilty. Guilty of chasing after God. You must be found guilty. If they tried you in a court of law, they cannot. <laughs> he was exonerating. He don't ever chase God. He was exonerated. He doesn't pray. <laughs> no, no, no. He don't pray. He, he gets on Facebook. He doesn't pray. You will never find, you will never be guilty of chasing God when you don't talk to him. How do you discover what you are famous for in heaven? You got to talk to the person that lives there. He is the creator. We are the created. How can you not talk to him? Well, Pastor Will. <laughs> I, I, I pray before I go to sleep. Baby, let me explain something to you. Okay, I don't want to be biased. Pastor Will, <laughs> I pray when I wake up. What, homeboy, let me tell you something. That little prayer that you say before you eat, <laughs> Father, bless this food in Jesus' name, amen, that ain't talking to God. Prayer is a dialogue. Prayer means you be talking to God on your way to work and God don't say nothing. But all day long. God, what are you saying? People trying to show you crazy stuff on Facebook. Oh, no time for that. Prayer is a dialogue. You've got to be found guilty. Somebody shout guilty. guilty. Of praying. The other thing you have to do is you got to get in the word. You got to get in the word of God. You've got to be found guilty of knowing that word. If they start saying, okay, right now, I know she knows the word. I won't have her yeah, get up on the stand and quote some scripture right now. What, what, what? Um, and you just be like, oh my God. God uh, uh, uh. Oh, so you don't know no scripture? No. Or you're free to go. Wow. Wow. You've got to be found guilty. Yes. You get up on the, on the stand. They ask you. Uh, Do you love praising the Lord? Absolutely. Praise ye the Lord. And praise all ye servants of God. Again. You got to be guilty. Of being in the word. Look at your neighbor and say. He's talking to you. Listen. I'm over 10 minutes. So I am done. 
Have y'all ever seen a message just stop right in the middle of it? Because if you don't be obedient, you won't be invited back again. So stand with me real quick. Trust me, I know about clocks too, girl. My people be coming up talking about He'll give you revelation all day. It's true. Listen. Point number four is this before I pray for you. It's this. Once you get a revelation and God begins to break chains in your life, then you become a, a you become responsible for the chains that have been broken in your life to help others be broken in regards to the chains. Watch this. Watch this, Watch this little pastor. Uh -huh. I know you, I know, I know you don't want, but yeah, yeah. Watch this. You might as well go on and stop. Here we go. All right, all right. But please, that anointing niggas on your life. I already see it. And I'm prophesying. I'm laughing, but I, am see, I see the anointing of God on your life. You have the same spirit and love as your father. Glory to God. And your daddy is a giant. And he's not raising and have arrows that are weak. You're strong. And don't sweat it. You don't have to be like him. You're going to be you. All right? Do your thing. Ain't that a cool prophecy? He get, Popsy gave me a prophecy. He told me, do my thing. Hey! <laughs> Point number four is this. Before we're done, watch this. If it was his purpose, Jesus, right? Remember, for his purpose, he came. It was manifested. If it's his, watch this. If it's his purpose, then it should be your priority. In other words, it ought to be a priority for you to be free. Number five is this. The gap between your chains and freedom is the word of God. David said this in Psalms 119 verse 9. He says, with all shall a young man cleanse his ways. And he said that he answered, uh, uh, answered the question himself. He says, by taking heed to the word of God. He says in verse 11, he said, but thy word have I hid in my heart so that I may not sin against you. If there is no root, there is no fruit. If there is no sin, then there are no longer any chains. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. And then I'm going, oh no, come on. That's a little bit weak. Give God praise today. Oh, hey, hey. Where there is no sin, there are no chains. Hey, hey, glory to God. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Now do me a favor. Lift your right hand because I can't pray for everybody, but I'm going to pray for everybody that is here. I want you to lift your hand. Just lift your right hand. Just relax in the other. But lift your right hand because I'm going to ask God right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Because you do know we are living in the dispensation and the time of the Holy Ghost. I thank God. Jesus said it is good that I go away from you. It is expedient. It is, it is for your benefit that I go away. Because the Holy Ghost, can, the same Holy Ghost that's dealing with people over here can deal with people over here. So right now I'm praying right now. Hey, it's a both shot. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, that every chain that we are willing to walk away from, every prison cell, things that have encapsulate, encapsulate us, encapsulated us and imprisoned us, I pray right now that this hand has the strength to walk out. Father, I thank you right now that the devil's plans are bound and the will of God is loosed in these hands. Make these hands to war against the devil that's trying to destroy our children. Make these hands to war against the devil that's trying to destroy our marriages. Make these hands to war and give this heart courage that I can walk out of anything that's trying to destroy me. Anything that's not according to the will of God. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on right now, just open up your mouth and say, Father, I receive it say father I receive your power to walk out to break out from any chain in Jesus name if you believe that put your hands down put them together give God praise